Welcome to the Bracket Factory and welcome to my latest video which is another video all about the Yamaha RD500 engine. Now you may have seen my previous video about this engine and that was a general overview of the engine showing how it was configured, showing there's various sort of quirks and anomalies with this engine. Very interesting engine but people wanted to know a bit more detail about some of it so I've chosen to talk about the Yamaha power valve system. So in this video I'm going to explain what the power valve system actually does, how it works, but and then specifically for the RD500, how all of the parts work, how they're all screwed together, a few things you need to know. Uh, it's useful to know certainly if you want to, if you're ever rebuilding one of these things. Uh, also, I'm going to touch on at the end a little bit about this YZR500 replica project that I'm working on. Uh, I'm going to do a bigger, fuller video on that in in the fullness of time. Not quite finished it yet, but there's a bit of a sneak preview towards the end of this video if you're interested. Uh, so get a cup of tea, sit down and enjoy the show. So right, I'm now back at the engine and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to explain all about the power valves and fit the power valves and fit the entire power valve system because if you ever play one of these engines, um, it is actually a bit complicated and there are quite a few things you kind of need to know about it, particularly about setup and particularly about power valve controllers etc so first thing I'm going to do is take off uh, the heads taking off all this all this cooling stuff um, because it's all completely in the way for when you actually want to start pl playing with the power valve um, you can kind of get into it uh, in situ here but it's, an, it's a real pain so when you're actually building up the engine you generally stick all the power valve stuff on before you put the heads and the cooling system on um, so uh, yeah whip that off whip these off and let's take one of these barrels over to the bench. So we're over at the bench now and I've taken off one of these barrels and next to it is another barrel. And if you're into two strokes, you may well recognize this barrel. This is actually off an RD 250LC Yamaha, of course, uh, 1982. And this is the bike that totally was a game changer for two strokes. All of a sudden this thing came out and it completely wiped the floor with everything else. And one of the reasons was it was eminently tunable bike. And if you're into two strokes at the time or now, you'll know that by changing the height of the exhaust port, which is this port here, changing the height of that port there, you'll affect the power delivery characteristics of the engine. And the general rule of thumb that you learnt when you were 17 is that if you make it higher, you make it more powerful. So many a young lad, including me, basically took their bike to bits and got a file and started filing away furiously. And actually, if you look inside this one, that is exactly what somebody's done. It wasn't me. Somebody did it. Could have been 40 years ago. Uh, and it's all very well, and it does actually work. If you raise the exhaust port height, you'll get more power. Unfortunately... Um, there's a snag and the snag is let's say this is your power curve here like that and this is peak power and you want to get more power so you get a file and you hack away and you get more power excellent more power but unfortunately it's at the cost of low-end power uh, and if you're a foolish 18 year old or 17 year old, you think, if I just make it higher, I'll get more power. So you get up here and you completely knacker the, 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 the profile of the engine. You, you can't actually get the engine spinning fast enough to hit this thing called the power band. You get to there and it all goes mental. Um, well, it did. It was great fun. So everybody knew that. And of course, Yamaha knew that. So what they decided to do, they invented this system called the power valve system, YPVS. And it's this little, uh, it's called a cotton reel valve. It rotates and it changes the, the, uh, the height of the exhaust port that the, the engine sees, if you like, the piston sees. So you get the best of both worlds. You, you, use, you, you keep the, uh, the, the uh, height of the exhaust port low in the low thing. And then as you turn the valve, you raise it and you get the best of both worlds. So you really do have your cake and eat it. And it's, uh, everybody else then copied this power valve system. So anyway, back to back to the engines. So um, th incidentally, the 250LC, the bigger brother was a 350LC, and then they of course they brought out the 350LC YPVS, which had the power valve system. 
Um, right, anyway, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk a bit more about the power valve and the bits and how they fit in the, uh, this barrel. So here we have the parts of the power valve. The power valve comes apart in two halves and the halves go in from either side uh, and it's held together, together with this draw bolt here. Now you'll notice the draw bolt is off centre. Uh, it needs to be off centre because it's going through half of this power valve and sometimes what you see is somebody's decided to tune it and they've ground all this away and they've actually hit the bolt. Um, so that stops you, you kind of, you know, taking too much meat off these things. But to be honest, you don't really need to. Um, what else? Oh, the other the other thing is that uh, the common question is, can I um, take my power valves apart and clean them with the barrel still on the engine? Unfortunately, you can't because this, if you've got, imagine you've got two barrels side by side, um, these are bits are touching, you, you can't get them in and out. So what we'll do, so we'll just stick these inside here and do up this bolt, this draw bolt. We'll be able to see it operating. Right, slightly time consuming. Oop, wrong Allen key. That's all right, I'll do it by hand. Right. Okay, so this is now in, and you can see it's not pinched up completely tightly, but you can see here, with the power valve completely open, I've got the, my maximum port height, and if I start to close it, you can see that, you can see that it, the piston, effectively, the engine sees a lower exhaust port height. So that's all it does, it just rotates up and down depending on the engine RPM. Very clever, eh? Now, to keep this um, the whole thing sealed in, you've got a series of bushes and seals. Now, you may notice that the fit on these is feels a bit sort of a bit sort of loose, uh, and that is normal um, because you can't have tight tolerances on these things because they get completely gummed up with two-stroke oil and coke and all sorts of rubbish and junk. And that's why an RD500 does a cycle on startup to kind of free up, um, free up these and make sure they don't actually stick, which they do, by the way. So on one side, you've got this bush that goes in here like this, and then this seal goes in there like that, S sort of seals it all together. That just, that's just a press fit. On the other side, you've got this plug here. It's got a, a rubber seal. That, that should have a rubber uh, O-ring on it as well. That rubber O-ring, there's a little, there should be a little um, uh, tab with a hole on that that lines up with there. Unfortunately, on this particular engine, somebody had snapped it off. That presses in there. And now you've got a completely sealed power valve that opens and closes. So what I'll do is I'll whack the power valves on all four of them and we'll check back in on the engine and see actually how they're all connected together and synchronized. So I've now put all the power valves in and the reason it all looks a bit different is because I've canted the engine backwards and the reason I've done that is it makes setting all these power valves uh, much easier. So before I do that, worth pointing out a couple of things. Uh, I use the, the fronts to demonstrate. So these power valves, not only are they paired, so this has got a two and a two, this has got a one and a one, but they're also handed. So the one and the one goes on the right hand side, and the two and the two goes on the left hand side. And that's the same on both sides. Well, the other thing to watch out for is when you're rebuilding this, is um, these should have a flat on them like that. And the flat should be flat, but sometimes it's not flat, it's worn out. And this is the sign of a, a power valve that's done a lot of work over the years and they start to get a bit knackered. So there's various ways you can saw that out. You can, you can, put, you can build up with weld and file it down or you, can, you could use some kind of, um, what's it called, epoxy metal stuff or all sorts, up to you, lots of different ways. Anyway, back to the engine. So now we've got this situation 
where we've got all the power valves in and obviously you make you have to make sure that everything is is, is completely free to rotate these should, should should rotate freely if they don't something is wrong and we now need to connect these power valves and we use this little bracket um got another one somewhere uh let me just undo this bracket so it's a d-shaped clamp and on the inside of this thing you've got uh, a little rubber kind of cush almost like a cush drive so it's like a rubber cushion just there and the idea behind this rubber is that it takes out some of the slack between these two but also allows a certain amount of freedom of movement this bottom plate you can see if you look closely you can see it's actually worn again another reason that you get slop in the power valve so um, if you want to if you want an, the app to optimal performance you make sure that um, all of these are don't have these these marks on you could dress this out and shim it or actually you can buy new ones of these so you could do that so what I'm gonna do now is stick this that clamp on there I'm, I'm not going to show me doing that it's a bit fiddly and then we'll check back in and I'll show you the trick you need to do well it's not a trick uh, I'll show you what you need to do to make sure that you've actually set all this up properly right the clamps now on and you can see it ties these two together and as I move that up and down both of them open and close and what you need to do is entirely possible to reassemble this in completely the wrong way and be completely oblivious to it because you can get these power valves around the wrong way and they'll still work but they'll be shut or very shut which is not ideal so you may have noticed there's a hole just here and this u-shaped thing if you pass that rod through there slide it through that gap it's no coincidence this is obviously factory and put your finger up inside here and you can feel this the, the power valves is completely flush so this position corresponds to power valves fully open and that is how you build the engine power valves fully open you set it all up fully open because when the engine is not running on a rd500 power valves are, uh, are not open when you turn the ignition on they'll shut then open again when you kick start it the engine starts to run they'll actually shut you don't even realize that's happening because the engine started and anyway you're not looking at the power valves so um, i'll i'll do the other side put that bracket on and then we can talk about how all of this lot is actually tied together so all the power valve clamps are fitted, uh, fit, well, I'll say all, all two of them, and you see a new thing has appeared. Uh, this is the reed um, cage holder for the lower bank, and this tower thing with the pulley is what uh, connects the power valves. But uh, let's go over to the bench and I'll explain how all this lot works. Back at the bench and a few more parts to walk through. So this is the tower that I talked about before. And then we've got this pulley. It's a two-part pulley. And, and this pulley is controlled by the cables which run from the power valve servo and, and it rotates. And it's in two parts. Um, one part leaves off to, off to one set pair of power valves and the other one the other pair of power valves. And it basically slots on there like this. And then the linkages are these two here. Now unfortunately, or fortunately, they're different lengths, so you need to get the wrong way, the right way around. It is possible to connect it the wrong way around, I think. Again, it'll seem like it works, but the power valves will be going all over the place. It'll be crazy. So anyway, one goes forwards and two, sorry, two, one goes to the rear bank and two goes to the front bank. The long one goes to the rear. So I think what I'll do now is I'll just basically, oh, what well, I forgot to mention. Then you have these little links that sit at the back that go onto those clamps that we saw. Interesting, you'll, you'll notice on this one, this is loose. And that is another cl classic. This one is slightly loose. This one is very loose. These work loose and you you either have to centre punch them again or ideally just a blob of TIG on there to sort them out. I'll stick these on and you'll get the, you'll get the gist of it. So I think what I'll do, stick it all on the, on the engine now and you can see what it looks like. Right, it's now all screwed to the motor. And you can see on this side, I've attached this to the top and it's a pull which shuts the power valve and that opens the power valve. Uh, and the other side is exactly the same. And so at the moment, these kind of move independently from each other because 
this is not tightened up. So what I need to do is I need to put my, my rod in here uh, and set this in the open position and put another rod in here and set this in the fully open position. Now they're both synchronized and open and if I can find a screwdriver there's one I can knit this up. So now I have just synchronized both of my power valves in the fully open position. So if I take these rods out now and I turn this that's that's open that's closed open closed open closed and you can see that the the um, the position of the ends of the cables is at the bottom of the pulley which makes sense if it was at the top it wouldn't be clearly stupid so the only thing now uh, is to sort out the cables so I'll get some cables and the power valve and show you how that goes so finally we've connected these two cables and if I pull that and pull that and simulate what the servo is doing you can see how it will work now on the servo there is a pulley I'm afraid there is no pulley on here that pulley was robbed for another reason but you can see there's a one and a two on there and a one and a two on there so at least you get told um, which one goes to which the only slight snag is that one cable is longer than the other um, but you'll have to work that out for yourself. It's 50-50. Sod's, sods law is you'll get it wrong first time. So whatever you think of doing first, don't do that. Do the other thing and you're probably going to get it right. So that pretty much sums it up. Uh, that's how the power valve system works on an RD500. So as promised, here's a very quick preview of the YZR500 I'm working on. Um, so it's obviously an RD500 engine. Uh, it's slotted into a TZR 250 3MA frame. Um, it's got um, TZR 250 swing arm, carbon wheels, YZR bodywork. Um, you'll have to wait. To, you, you can probably guess what color colors it's all in, but you'll have to wait for that. Uh, all the front end is all custom made, fabricated power valve servers in the right place anyway that's all for now full video coming so i hope you found that interesting if you did please hit like if you want to find out about any of the future videos coming out hit subscribe if you've got any comments please do leave them i try to answer every single comment that gets left anything technical about the engine i'm happy to answer and if you want any other videos about anything in particular then please put it in the comments but for now thanks for watching